Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, today is the penultimate episode on this uh, series. We've been discussing in this series how to remain focused and sharp in your purpose pursuit. Why are we doing this? We're doing this because we're saying that there are legitimate things, very many legitimate things that you and I can be able to do. We are gifted at them, we're equipped at them, we have ideas about them, and they're just a gazillion things. They are all legit. They can be money-making, they can be inspirational, they can be impactful, they can contribute, they can transform, but there are many. So what do we do? We cannot do all of them at a go. If we try to do all of them at a go, what what happens? We become paralyzed. uh, We don't become productive. We don't become effective. So to be effective, we become minimalist. We do few things that matter. We use the Pareto principle. We do the 20% that matter and we leave the 80% out. And this 20% are also going to give us the 80% of productivity that we're looking at. Minimalist approach. How do we do exactly? How do we do this minimalist? It's just as simple as A, B, C, and D. And that's what I'm discussing in these episodes. Today we add one more even as we're closing these episodes tomorrow. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. For us to do the most, get the best out of our lives, we've got to be effective. And for us to be effective, we've got to be minimalist. And to be minimalist means we're going to be sharp in terms of our purpose pursuits and in terms of our focus in our work. Why are we saying this? We're saying this because we've already established that there is a possibility for us to do many things. And all these things, I'm not even talking about many things that are distractions. No, I'm talking about things that are good. Things that we are capable of doing. Things that we are gifted at. Things that we have ideas about. We are committed to. We are dedicated to. We They matter to us a lot. We're able to do all those things. The point is that we just have one head, one heart, one spirit. We can only have one life. We can only be alive once. And if we wanted to do all these things, it is basically shooting ourselves in the feet. I think there's someone who said if we were to do everything that we're capable of doing, we'll literally astound ourselves. And of course, they were talking from the angle of potential that if we expended all the potential that we have inside of us, we will astound ourselves. And it's true. And there is that, there is, there's a place for that. But I'm talking about sitting down and having to chart out a course that you and I are supposed to take. You cannot talk, take three courses at the same time. Okay, you can. But how are you going to be effective? You might, but how are you going to be effective? Definitely you will not be effective. That's why we're saying you're supposed to be minimalist. Hey, being minimalist is not an easy thing. It's not uh, straightforward. It's not one, two, three. There are some things that you painfully have to leave behind, not because you hate them. You love them, yes, but you've got to leave them behind so that you can be sharp with your purpose pursuit. And so minimalism is what we're saying that you're supposed to do. How does this work? Number one, acknowledge that there is so much to do and there's little time. 
Why do you need to acknowledge that? If you don't acknowledge that, then you find yourself divided. You find yourself not uh, in your mind, not uh, stable. You find yourself held as skelter like your mind is a beehive or a mess of a beehive, so, so to speak. There are very many things that you're supposed to do and you get paralyzed. You feel like there's so much to do and you need a lot of time, but uh, that time is not there. It is because you're not minimalist. You want to attack all these things that they go. Number two, you take note of all these things. You write them down. The things that you would rather do. That's why I tell people you should have an ideas list somewhere. An idea bank somewhere. When an idea comes upon you, what do you do? You store it somewhere. You record it. Because if you don't record it, it's going to keep knocking on your door, the door of your mind and so on and disturbing you and actually distracting you. It is good. It is something you can be able to do but you don't have time for it so put it down store it somewhere and then number three take some time and meditate upon it in other words go to your ideas list go to your possibilities list, go to your potential list go to your strengths list go to your opportunities list and look at it and ruminate around these things meditate about these things meditation is not emptying your mind and thinking about nothing it is thinking about stuff it is considering stuff in 360 degrees angles Right, And so consider this and consider that and consider this and consider that. That's what you do when you're meditating. What? Why is this important? The meditation is going to free you when, you're, when the time comes for you to work on the thing that you're working on right now. It frees you from starting to be diverted from those other things because you've already allocated time to them and you've thought about them and now they have been relegated into the subconscious and the subconscious mind is going to work behind the scenes when you're sleeping and even when you're working. So take time and meditate on those things that you've written down. But number four, take time and prioritize these things so that you can know what is important, what is urgent, what must be done, what is deep, what is the one that gives me uh, 80% of the output. So the 20% of this list, what are those things that can give me the, the biggest output? And what one? which one comes first? Which one comes last? Which one should I tackle immediately? Which, should I, which one should I tackle in the interim? Which one should is the, the short term, medium term, and long term? You prioritize your list. Again, when you do this, it frees your mind to focus on what is in the now, knowing that you've already planned yourself out, even for your own life. Number five, we talked about yesterday, you can delegate some things. You can't do everything. Therefore, you delegate some things. You mentor others and let them run with them as you concentrate on the core thing. Pastors who are normally missionaries do this a lot. When they are a missionary and they go to a particular country, at the first, they're the ones who will sweep the sanctuary. They're the ones who will set up the, the, the multimedia, the studio, the, the, TV, electric TV, uh, TV, the, the, the guitars and they set up all those things. And then they start mentoring people into teams. There's a work team. There's a multimedia team. There's a teaching team. There's a praying team. There's this team. There's a support team. There's a visitation team and so on. Delegation is what works. And then they remain on the vision, the main vision. That's what delegation is all about. But today I want us to talk about one thing that you need to do if you're going to stay minimal and sharp with your purpose pursuit if possible number six find out what you can hire out or what you can outsource this is going to cost you some money hiring means you're bringing in professionals who are engaging with you on a pure professional level contracts come into play here in other words they deliver us per service level agreements you are free to do other things. They can do what they are good at. And they are the ones who mind about it, crack their heads about it, get stressed with it. And, you know, if it's not moving, it is their problem. It's not your problem ultimately. Okay, ultimately it's going to be a problem if it doesn't work. But there are service level agreements and contracts which take care of you. When you hire people, you have released yourself to remain focused and minimalist and shut up with your main activity which is your purpose pursuit there are some things that 
they are not necessarily in your expertise to do for example in my life as a coach i know that there are some productivity apps that i must develop in order to assist my clients although i am not good at those although i love these apps and so on i am not so good at them i am not good in programming i've learned some programming expertise you know i can do if then else and when and so on the looping and so on but it is not my strong suit You cannot do everything guy. I mean you cannot say you want to be the programmer, the graphic designer, the marketer. At first, these are things you do, but you're not going to be productive if you keep depending on these things for a long haul. You need to hire these things out. So I hire a programmer, I hire a graphic designer, and I only do the minimalist there is in my graphics. But I hire the guys who are good at those things, and even if I could do a program, even if I could do a, a a graphic, you know, I would not be wise for me to leave coaching and start programming. So I need to hire someone else who have the expertise. They come to the level of professionalism, the expertise they bring, and I have the joy of looking at the guy who can do it the best than. than even as compared to myself how I would do it what does that do i get the joy of getting a finished product from somebody else which is professionally done and i get the joy of releasing myself to do that which i am passionate about and i am good at and that which is the core of my pursuit in life what is that it is about outsourcing it is about uh, hiring out and at times you might need full time at times you may need part time at times you may need as the need arises but the point is you're hiring out some things that need expertise some things that need professionalism so that, so that somebody else can run with them and you're released to do what you are good at tomorrow we end this but uh, until then bye bye Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh clean and inspiring.